shame and regret But when I hear you whisper Try to lift up your head I remember, oh God You're not done with me yet Cause I am redeemed You say chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. Come on, let your voice. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. Cause I am
amazing grace, how sweet the sound, amazing love, now flowing down through hands and feet that would nail to a tree. Your grace flows down and covers me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Your grace flows down and covers me. It covers me. It covers me. It covers me. Because.
much better. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, this morning there's a scripture that's been going through my mind, and uh, it's the scripture that says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, with God, He is truth, and He shares His truth with us. And when we know and when we operate in that truth, it truly does set us free. There is a freedom in that. You know, last night, um, Pastor and I were invited over to Cynthia and James's house to play cards. And we played cards with them and with Madison and with Emily last night. Um, we played a game you all might be familiar with. Um, we won't say the exact name of the game um, in this setting, but, you know, bull or bully or um, I don't think so. You know, something like that would kind of describe, you know, the other name for this card game that we played last night. And um, we had just a great time doing that. And after two or three rounds of that game, Emily said something so profound, and I don't think she even knows she said it at the time. But she said, man, God doesn't lie, and he always comes out ahead. And I thought, out of the mouth of babes, <laughs> God does not lie, and he always comes out ahead. That is such truth, because you know what? It is that truth that we know that always brings us out ahead. Not just saying a lie, not just speaking the truth, but operating in that. You know, there's times in our life that it may look like, you know what, if I just say what God says or I just believe what God says, I see a shortcut to get where I want to go. But you know what, if you just stick with God's truth, you always come out ahead in the long run. Always, every single time we come out ahead. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There's things in our lives that we all deal with, challenges that come up from day to day, pains that come in our body, and pinches that come into our pocketbook, and strains that come to relationships that we have. But the Word of God is always true. Always true. And if we stand and we operate in that truth of God, in the end, we always come out ahead. Always. If your body's hurting today, don't give in to what the body's saying. Give in and stand with what God says, that by Jesus' stripes you are healed. And the more we stand and we believe and we declare that and we thank our Father daily for that healing to manifest in our bodies, it will come to pass. Sometimes it takes a little while, but you know what? Sometimes it took a little while for our body to get in the shape it got in too. And sometimes God heals instantly and sometimes He heals through the process of time. The same way with our pocketbooks and with our finances. Sometimes God will lay it on somebody's heart and, buddy, God will pull you out of it in an instant. But sometimes we walk out of it progressively. But I promise if we stand on God's truth and keep walking in what He says, we do come out of it. God does not lie. But He always comes out ahead in the end. And it's the same with us. We stand in that truth. And we always come out ahead in the end. Amen? Amen. If you believe that, say amen this morning. Our God is so good. So, so thankful for the goodness that He brings into our lives. Let's just thank Him this morning. I just feel like we just need to bless Him for a minute. Father, we thank You and we honor You and we bless You today. Your grace truly is amazing. The things that you have brought us through and the things you have brought us to and the places that you are taking us, Lord, we thank you for each and every one. We thank you, Lord God, that your word never lies. We thank you that you always declare truth and you bring us 
into a place of truth and light and always in love. We thank you for your amazing love for us. We thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you always work things out for our good. Lord, we love you and we honor you today. In the name of Jesus. If you agree, say amen. Amen. We are going to continue to worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings today. If you all want to take a moment to prepare yourselves and if our offering takers will come. Anyone that came in late this morning, we are serving breakfast in the kitchen down the hall. You're welcome to help yourself to some amazing donuts and coffee and juice, uh, and you're welcome to bring it back in here. You know, God created us to eat and drink, and it's not disrespectful to do it in here. You know, He knows our hearts. Respect is shown in the heart. Amen. Amen. All right. Narelle, would you like to come bless the offering today? Aiden? <laughs> you better hurry, Aiden's getting ahead of you. <laughs> God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for waking us up and the roof over our head. We ask that you continue to bless this offering and let it go to the ones who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. most committed offering takers in the world. They look forward to this every Sunday. <laughs> and the most interesting process, isn't it? <laughs> give, uh, give them a big hand. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Bree. Thank you, Zoe. <laughs> this morning, we have um, someone in our fellowship that wants to share with you the good things that God has done in his life. And this story, Pastor and I have heard it, and it is absolutely amazing in what God can do in someone's life in one year. You know, Pastor and I have experienced that too. We feel like that um, we got taken from the pit to the palace within a year. And you know, God is no respecter of persons. What he will do for one, he will do for all. So if things aren't where you want it to be today, just hang on and hang with him. It will change. Amen? Amen. Jonathan, would you like to come share this morning? Give him a big hand as he comes. All right. Uh, about seven years ago, I lost my job at Starbucks. Uh, I was making pretty good money and living large, having fun. Uh, I was in college. Uh, when I lost my job, I had to make a decision. Uh, finish school, have an apartment, or try to find another, another job or quit school. So I decided to stay in school. I sold everything I had, my washer, my dryer, my TV, uh, my dresser and stuff. I shipped back to my parents' house. They had no clue what I was doing. Um, then I eventually found some friends. I stayed with them. Um, it ended up not being a good thing, so I started staying out of my car, and things came past, and things got better, and I finally found some of my friends in Cookville, stayed with them behind a couch for probably a year. Uh, then everything was going good, finished, graduated college, uh, which, thank God. Everyone in my family didn't think it was possible, either did I. <laughs> uh, then I got uh, a good job with uh, an, uh, not manufa a manufacturing company in Cookville, Tennessee. Uh, I wasn't making what I needed to make to pay my student loans and to live on, so I found a job at a hotel, and I was working there as well. Um, I eventually realized that uh, when Taylor finally moved back to Knoxville, 
I was actually crashing with her because I couldn't afford to live there. Um, then the hotel blessed me with a place to live, so I stayed there. Um, after a while, the guy next to me started partying too much. That ended. <laughs> and then I had to make a decision. I uh, decided to live out of my car for six months. I put everything in my car. I would go to the gym every morning, shower, wake up every morning, go to work, work all night, through the night with the hotel, get up, shower, and do it all over again. Um, but it was probably the most rewarding experience of my life living out of my car. You never know, but waking up every morning, I was probably in a lot better shape back then. <laughs> but God really blessed me through everything that's went on with living in my car. I just felt more at peace. I uh, met a guy through Identity Group. We started going to church together. Um, and with him, I started reading the Bible a little bit. Don't ask me to quote anything out of it. <laughs> um, and we started going through verses in the Bible. We went through a Dave Ramsey little training thing. I don't agree with everything he says, but he is pretty ingenious about the way he mixes worship with uh, paying off debt, which is very important. Um, then everything was going well, and I decided I'd start applying for jobs. Um, you can pray all day long for change. It's not going to change if you're not willing to act on it. Come on. And so many people I watch, they won't act on things they truly want. It kills me inside. But I pray about it all the time. Um, I'm not much. I'm getting on my knees and praying. I, I want to do action. I'll pray as I act. And um, I got a job here in Oak Ridge, and they have paid me very well. Um, my goal was to be from homeless to homeowner in a year. Uh, I was just a month shy of that. So in a year, technically, uh, I went from homeless to homeowner. And every day I look out my window and there's some deers. I'm going to the bathroom and I'm like, oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> and I had Tammy and uh, Justin come over and bless the home. And um, it's really a blessing to be in the home. I moved my Bible that I kept in my car at all times and never left it uh, to the house when I moved in. And every time I look at it, I just kind of laugh and look at the house I used to live parked next to the road and then the house I'm sitting in where I'm warm and <laughs> I really praise the Lord and I wanted everyone here to know no matter what happens to you living in a car it's not bad don't ever do it if you can avoid it <laughs> but pray for what you want and to work for it the key is to work for it you're in America and God bless America because anything's possible yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. From homeless to a homeowner in one year, lived in his car and uh, never had a bad attitude. Actually, was uh, appreciative that he was able to live in a car. And and here's the other thing he didn't tell. He didn't. Nobody knew it. He never told his mama that he was living in a car. He just lived in it. And uh, when he finally moved in to his home, am I correct in saying this? His mama came to see the home, and he told it told his mama then. And she never knew. So uh, that's God. It's, it's not no coincidence that he went from homeless to a homeowner in one year. Listen, we all know this, but nothing is impossible with yes. God. Uh, yes. One year is like I was in hell. The next, just, just 365 days later, man, like I'm in heaven. So it don't take God long to turn things around. So you just can't let your attitude get the best of you. Amen. Right. Everybody give Jonathan another hand clap right there. Yeah. And he is a hard worker. So uh, we're going to let the kids go back. The kids can go back to their class. Is the youth group going back, David? Youth group can go back, so we appreciate that. This coming Sunday is our uh, work day, so if you can come and this Saturday, Sunday, yeah. This, <laughs> this coming Saturday is our work day.